on this computer. Um, so yeah, like I mentioned in chat, some concerns about the prescriptiveness of, of some of the things that we're doing in the handbook, but rather than just complain, let me start by asking you sort of how you see this in the bigger picture. So um, I can see it as like, we're scaling as an organization. And so there's certain things that we should write down or also that, you know, uh, we're growing to that point more specifically, the product team is growing as well. You know, we're, we're hiring product directors. And so uh, we should also, as part of that, assume that there's some thinking about, you know, like how we scale and so on and so forth. So therefore, there are certain things that we should write down as part of this scaling. So is that how you think of it? Or is it like you've always wanted to have these things written down and you just never had the time to do it? Or maybe a bit of both? Or maybe a third thing that I'm not getting at, so I don't want to put you in the box. Sure, sure. Yeah, I think there are three things uh, that come to mind, right? There's the prescriptive versus results, and then there's onboarding for new hires, and then there's um, sort of, for lack of a better word, oversight or, you know, and that could be external and internal. Um, and so the first one, yeah, in general, I completely agree that we should talk about results. Um, we should talk about what the artifacts are that we generate, not how you generate them. Um, and especially, you know, as that relates to sort of creativity and solving the problem or, in, you know, whatever, it totally makes sense. But as a handbook, one of the, the most important things about the handbook is that it is an onboarding tool and we have a lot of new hires in 2019 that are going to be hired. And even the ones that we've already hired, I have noticed it has been definitely a challenge where people come on board and there's a certain expectation about how something works. And then we realize, oh, it was just never documented. And so then we document it. We're getting better because every new hire finds those bugs. Right, and, and then improves more. it, yeah. But this is a start. Right, so we have continuous improvements, uh, iterations on the handbook itself. But, um, but that's where the sort of prescriptive thing is actually valuable. Not as a you must do this, but you know, in some way, like here's a guideline, here's a recommendation, or here's whatever, here's what others are doing. Um, being able to describe that, you know, what to some extent is what we do know. So it's like, oh, you should go and talk to customers, um, you know, your internal customers, and one, and saying. Uh, you know, if you do that once every six months, that's clearly not often enough. If you do it every day, you know, maybe there might be some justification for it, but probably that's not necessary. And so to be able to say, yeah, in our experience, this is something you should do once a week, once a week, once a month, whatever the number is. I think that those are helpful. And there's clearly a way to phrase it without being prescriptive. Um, and, and ideally, you sort of describe the results you want to get out of it first and why, and then present the guideline. Because as we've seen, different stages and different categories and different features have different reasons for different things. Like at a certain time, you know, uh, the, the, the delivery team is moving towards continuous delivery. And so they're going to need constant interaction with the release team because they're responsible for this, you know, the CD features. But once that's all done, like maybe then that dies down and you don't need to then ping the person once a week and be like, okay, there's still nothing happening. I don't need you for anything. You know, like obviously you can use your own judgment, but whatever we do know, we should try and capture. And we should definitely think about how that person, you know, the next person comes on board. But also we have, um, you know, there's a, Within all the PMs, there's a distribution of, I don't know, like different ways of operating and things like that. And some of them are better than others. And so if one PM does something on a weekly basis, let's say, and another one does it on a monthly basis, and there's a material impact on that, then that's worth reflecting again. Now, maybe again, we talk about it as a result and say, well, what is the actual impact? But, but again, let's... Let's, use, let's try to normalize a little bit, not for normalization purposes, but maybe um, leverage and just share, knowledge sharing would be sort of more of the goal. Um, 
but having said that there is also some value in just purely having some normality like if every pm is updating the roadmap every month it just makes things easier um even if that's not strictly driving results hopefully it is because otherwise it's a waste of time uh, but then like if we all collectively decide that that's a waste of time we should only be doing this every two months or every three months or whatever the number is well then let's have a conversation about it and then let's let's discuss that and then only if some teams are specifically like well no for me only three months makes perfect sense but for somebody else it's a year or somebody else it's one week we can just sort of say well look you're free to deviate you're free to experiment but when you learn something come back and let's try to articulate why that is and and understand like why does a different pm have better success one way or the other and again share that knowledge because again maybe it's going to be surprising for somebody else that oh i didn't see this benefit right, or right, whatever right. you know so it's just about knowledge sharing in general and um and and then from that perspective i think there is generally a convergence towards having similar processes because you look for the universal truths that are, you know this benefits everybody right, so right, everyone right. the global that optimal same process right yep. right but then of course leaving room for for you know different optimal but even in the like I think we are hitting a maturity where we used to just say, okay, different teams are going to operate differently and we don't know why, but they're successful. So that's great. And now I feel like we can start to articulate, well, this team needs different processes because for example, it's got a bunch of new categories that are in a different maturity cycle. And because right. of that, yeah. they operate differently. And to the extent that we can do that, that means we can actually now extrapolate the processes to new areas and we can foresee that, hey, this new team we're creating now has these things. Well, you're probably going to do this because X, Y, and Z. And so I, th I think we're at a point where we actually can do that. We're starting to articulate at least when it comes to category. Because I think I've even caught you a couple of times saying like, oh, because this stage is more mature. And while plan overall is more mature, VSM is not. And VSM might actually need to be handled differently. And so while your stage vision needs to get updated at a certain frequency or whatever, the category vision might be different for VSM yeah. because it is still early. Um, so anyway, so that's, that's kind of the net of it. The third thing, though, um, that is important as well is sort of the, uh, like, why are we doing all these things in the first place? And if you look at it as just a one way of, Product manager, so the specific thing you came up with, right, was about the roadmap and how often do we need to update the right. roadmap and present the roadmap, uh, you know, so grooming it, but also presenting it. And if you look at it as, well, if the end result is just that we have this amazing roadmap and we're delivering amazing things because that's ultimately what this is service of, for the most part, yeah. Um, you know, and I've been part of company teams where we just delivered amazing things. We had no roadmap and nobody cared because they just knew the team delivered amazing things. And there's a part of me that would love for that to be true. And, you know, just in you know, an environment of trust where we just trust that everybody's going to deliver amazing things. But in reality, things aren't in a vacuum. We do need to align with company goals, company vision, strategy, and not, you know, things aren't perfect. I, I I would love to say that I've communicated the vision so crystal clear that everybody knows exactly what's going on. And so then you just make your decisions and then you're going to make the perfect decisions because you have all the right information. But the reality is there's a lot of you know, information loss in that process. And I've been through lots of conversations where I look at somebody's three month roadmap and then I'm like, I mean, I can see how you came up with this, but if you rearrange the order of these things, you will help deliver our company vision faster. And after the conversation, it's really obvious that, yeah, of course, I'll swap those things. But it's not always obvious. And, you know, and I don't think it's just about, you know, the individuals that play or anything like that. But right. just, you know, you're working on delivering things, and you're working on getting things out. And you're like, oh, I can do this, this, this. And sometimes, you know, being forced to have a conversation about it means that you're going to think about it a little bit more. Um, having that two-way conversation instead of just a one-way conversation may mean that you're going to think about it, but even if you don't think about it differently, somebody else might think about it differently. Right. And then that's where, you know, the 
the director and executive uh, sort of oversight, and I know that's not sort of a positive word, but uh, you know, no, no, yeah, no, I, I of the executive viewpoint comes in, and we can say, hey, look, hey, you've got this roadmap, but if you juggle this here, or actually the other thing is like, there's this other team that's got this thing. If you dovetail that, I mean, there's like right. some serendipitous moments too. But there is some value, and I, I've felt it and seen it absolutely at GitLab, but there's some value in presenting the roadmap on a periodic basis and getting that feedback and then getting the, you know, getting it in time to make a change without it being too disruptive. Like if I catch it two or three releases ahead, then you can swap two things. If it's at the kickoff, too late. Um, if everything's already scheduled and people are already working on it and you've already got you know, right. whatever, then it's like, okay, you're just going to have to keep going with that one. So that's where I think the, the roadmap really adds value. And, and again, having that oversight. And in this case, I'd like to think that if we present it to our customers that we're going to get more feedback sooner. Um, <clears throat> the quantity of feedback at the roadmap level has not really been great. Even the quality has not been that great. We'll get individual requests. We're like, well, I want that one feature. Where the, the value for me is more, you know, me and Sid talking about the order of delivering things and being able to rearrange and, and, and then also, frankly, feeding what people are doing and what people are constrained with into, um, like a better articulation of the plan in the first place. Mm -hmm. Like um, after a while you start seeing like, oh, well, if we can't get to all this, then right. what if you just focus on the MBC of these five things and we actually collectively sort of de-scope things, but pick like, what's, this, what's the most important part? And at any given time, like you could pick several different most important parts, right? So it's all about interpretation, but collectively we might come up with a better interpretation and then come back and say, okay, well, look, now, you know, what we're really, really going to do is make this vision about X, Y, and Z. So anyway, so that's, that's, the, that's my basic take on it. I think there's value in having it for onboarding purposes. And then there's value in um, being able to say, look, if we've got a regular cadence, uh, let's deliver these things up so that other people can, um, can have a, a regular sort of pattern on this. And in particular, like, I would love to be able to have you know, for example, Kenny and Eric go and work with dev and ops or ops and dev to come up with their roadmaps. And then I can look at the collective roadmap and then I can pass that on to Sid. Right, right. And hopefully at that point, he's just nodding his head and saying yes. But if not, exactly. well, then that, you know, that comes all the way back. Um, but again, doing that in time, um, you know, so that we can actually you know, affect right. change. That's that's kind of a goal. Yeah. Let, let me respond two ways. I think a lot of this is a lot of times when I see this, maybe it's because um, of how I'm working myself. Um, and as we're scaling, we should have some convergence, like exactly like you said. So maybe this <laughs> it comes back to it. But my my experience as a product manager at GitLab um, is somewhat different from what you're describing, and that again. That's, that's why we need convergence. I think that would help. Um, so what I've experienced is I think I'm pretty good at constantly pushing my ideas. So, so you, you articulate two things, sort of like, I, I know I, I didn't want to use the word internal, but like just internal, like sort of up the chain and then sort of customer facing. So I think I'm doing a pretty good job in doing both. And so, I, I, well, at least I don't know up the chain, like I can't guarantee what Yob is doing, right? But I think I'm doing a good job of, telling him what's on the roadmap and I constantly, you know, beg him for feedback and I push constantly say like, this is Rome, my roadmap. And a lot of times it's actually like, Victor, you know, I, I, I've seen that it's like, stop talking. <laughs> it's good enough. So maybe I'm, I'm coming from that bias where like, I'm over, like I told Eric, like, this is how I work with the OI. I over communicate and I just bombard him with information. And so that's worked well. And maybe, Maybe not every PM does that. Maybe not every PM should do that. Or maybe I shouldn't even do that with Eric. I'll, I'll find out, right? But um, um, so, so perhaps that has never been a problem. So that's why when I hear like, oh, I need to review before I take this to Sid, like I, I'm, I'm surprised, like at least like I hope, and Yob has never said like he's surprised with stuff. So maybe that's 
That's just from me personally. And then from the customer aspect as well, it's similar. Um, so, so I think, I think that's where the, some of my uh, dissonance is coming from because I don't see a need for that. But maybe it, um, I do agree that if we put this in some prescriptive sense, but maybe use the word guideline more than prescription, then, then it makes sense. So I do see value there. And I can, I can also see like sort of why I, I, I look at these merger quests and I, and I like, hmm, like why, why do we even need that? And then, but, but I, I understand the concept. So I, I think I can, I can add value to these merge requests by offering uh, comments that are more in tune with that in my own personal experience. And, and, and even, like I said, in multiple times in prior meetings, like how I work and how I found success. Um, and so, so that makes sense. I think that, that definitely helps. And so, um, but I, and then so, so speaking of this, so, so like pretty much no, no argument there. But I wanted to get your take on some of these things, like like just to... before you move on. Maybe. Sure, sure. Response to my response. Yeah, sorry. Uh, <clears throat> exactly. Yeah. Um, just to clarify a couple of things, because I, I think that's a really great point. Um, and first off, definitely other PMs are not um, proactively talking about the roadmap all the time. Um, and so that's, you know, definitely an opportunity for learning and sharing and things like that. And it's a great example of like, yeah, you might be doing this already, but others aren't. How do we make sure that we're learning from those lessons and, you know, encouraging others to do that? Um, but then also specifically, even if Yob is very well aware, I'm not aware of what your roadmap is. I don't know if Sid is. I doubt it because I'm in the same meetings. <laughs> so unless there's some other back channel way that he's getting aware of that. That does mean that there isn't necessarily that being passed up, which, you know, you could say there's a process thing there, but there's also opportunities for a better way, you know, what's the artifact? And if we don't know, like, do our customers, maybe the customers that are following the issues are, but like, you right. know, do the, does the sales team, does the whatever. And so that's why it was a great part of the conversation to be like, well, maybe the group conversation should be a place where right. the groups it's, aren't, it's like right now, groups are all left. Right, right, exactly. But the groups are talking, like the engineering managers usually present the group conversations. Right. There should be a portion where the product manager then jumps in and talks about the roadmap or the, you know, I don't care who talks about it, it doesn't really matter. Right. Collectively, it's the roadmap for the, for the group, not just the PM. So, but like, that's a great opportunity where like, if I watch those group conversations and I saw that, then I would have that. It doesn't have to be, I'm not prescribing a specific channel. Sure. Um, so again, if we learn from best practices, if if whatever it is we're whatever we're doing now isn't working that great, let's come let's try some other things. I would say a handbook edit that says, okay, let's add these to the group conversations. If that turns out to not be great, then we'll remove that. Right. But it's a way where we can be handbook first and we can actively iterate. Sure. And we don't have to we're not waiting for the handbook to codify a successful pattern. It's a place where we experiment in the first place. But I will say that I'm not, again, I'm not aware of what the three month roadmap for plan is. I know the big boulders, like I know some of the things you're working on, but I don't know the roadmap. And so I think there is an opportunity to improve there. Um, even if so, you yeah. know, you're know you on top of it. I, I, I think so. I think, well, with, you know, with the, the new changes in personnel, I think that this is like the perfect time to realign. Um, yeah. I, I think, I think I've, I've relied on making, you know, my direct, rep, uh, who I report to happy. And I mean, that should be a forcing function in some sense, right? Because like that person should be telling me how to do my job right. and giving me background. But there's also an element of like, you should do it for the sake of GitLab and we should do it all together and, and stuff like that. And, and I'm also just as responsible, if not more, um, to do so. So I, I think that that's personally my... My right. So that is a side effect of our growing. Sorry, say that again? Yeah, so that's a side effect of our growth too. Okay. So that's a side effect of our growth where like there used to be a time where Sid would know everything that the product team is working on or that the engineering team is working on. And so like he didn't right. need to have these conversations. As he gets more distant, then he leans more on us to sort of proactively communicate in right. more formal right. ways. Right. And then as now we're adding a director layer and so then there's even more distance at some level. And so how do we sort of wrap that up in a way that is digestible? The interesting thing though is we have a great model, 
we are a transparent open source company. And so <laughs> if we just tell the world how things work, then right. everybody in the company is by default aware as well. And so the group conversations and the, you know, the issue boards and the roadmaps and things like that, that we tell our customers about those become the same thing. So I don't, I, I love that we have an opportunity to make processes that are not specifically, how do we inform the director? How do we inform the VP? How do we inform right, the CEO? Right, right. Like that's not the, if we just inform everybody, then, then that's oh, yeah. easy. And there is going to be at some point where that doesn't scale either though, because you know, if we start talking about, I don't know. But that's some... what the group conversations, like you said, in the cab and all that, that to me, that's helping to rein that in a little bit because you can literally just post right, it exactly. every single day and say like, this is my roadmap, look at it. And then, I mean, that's what I see in Slack right now. Like everybody's just grabbing your attention. It's like a horrible Facebook feed. If you think about it, right? Everybody's just grabbing your attention and like right, right. YouTube videos now, and then there's a link to a nice image so people will click on it. Um, but it does not scale. And so, I'm sure some people. But there are scale leave. challenges there too, right? Right, right. So like that's right now saying. we have. Sorry, yeah, Zoom is being weird. I don't know if it's my connection or yours. <laughs> Zoom is behaving very well today. Yeah, sorry about that. But um, but yeah. So like right now we have a group conversation, and we call it for the group, but group equals um stage mm -hmm. equals yeah. team currently. Um, and right, but um, by the end of 2019, we're projecting or we're, for, or we're planning on like more than doubling the total, you know, capacity, but also, you know, going from like nine stages to well, really only 10 stages, but now actually like 30 groups under right, those, right, right. Uh, maybe not quite 30, but some number that's quite large. Um, maybe under there, it's only 24, but then we have another six groups outside of the DevOps life cycle. And so that's like 30 group conversations now to have, you know, you do one of those every five weeks, like suddenly you, know, you have no year. time and <laughs> you're doing whatever. So then do we start rolling them up by stage conversation? Yeah, it is. Or do we start doing um, like uh, department? updates right we're gonna have dev sec uh, ops and uh, enablement is the other department currently like do we have a role up there and then there might very well be a world where you know maybe even like sid doesn't pay attention to the group conversation anymore because he's only going to watch the department conversation and the department conversation has to roll up that information i'm not projecting what sid is, is or isn't going to do but um there are there are always scale issues um and so like at what granularity like some granularity has got to be lost at some point, you know, you still need to have a big picture without being able to dive in. So, but for now, I feel like group conversations are the right way to communicate this. But at some point that may or may not be the right way. It's hard to say. That's good. No, no, I like, but anyway, I definitely appreciate the feedback and I appreciate <laughs> The zoom is terrible. We're like five seconds off. <laughs> Exactly. This is a huge, huge lag. But anyway, I appreciate the feedback. Appreciate that. Yeah, not every PM is at the same place, and not necessarily it's about quality or anything like that. But just there's different operating constraints and whatever. And so, collectively learning how to do better um, is really important. And 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 from that perspective, and not being prescriptive, but about just how do we learn and how do we, you know, encourage things to do better. All right, that's good. I think we can end it on that and I can post this because of this awesome. horrible network issues. <laughs> thank you, Mark, for your time. Yeah. All right, thank you very much. All right, happy holidays and happy new year. <laughs> yeah, you too.